Hello. Is anybody out there? How are you all today? Well, here I am somewhere. If I can find a point to think and do that, there's me. Hello. Well, greetings and salutations, everybody, on this wild and windswept stormy day over here. What's it like over there and wherever you are in the world? Let's see. Is anybody home? today i'm not sure anyway so well does it look like anybody's in oh no somebody is hello who's in who's that oh it doesn't tell me anyway leave a comment so where are we today well, as I wasn't really sure what I was going to yammer on about today, Stephanie asked very nicely if I could tell the story of the Morrigan. She's an Irish goddess. Now, I am not, I have to admit, uh, as clear on some of the Irish mythology, hello Neshi, as some of the Welsh, but I shall do my best to talk about her. Anyway, in when when Stephanie asked about this, she said that she'd read a, a story of the Morrigan and would like to hear the whole story but that's too big for an hour it's it's a huge story i'll do my best to give a little bit of a clear review on who she is who she is in essence but i will and i don't know if stephanie's listening but if she could let me know which part of the story that she she's heard then i will try and take it from there but i'm thinking it's probably the 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 the, the, the most well-known one is the cattle raid of cooley and uh the oh it's a whole big epic epic and it starts oh it's just huge huge story the stories within stories within stories so let's just start at one point where who who is she who is the morrigan or morrigan just as a name anyway well She's one of the Twatha de Danann. And apologies to anybody who speaks Irish and is horrified by my pronunciations in any of this. So apologies in advance. But so um, there are three sisters. Uh, because the, the, the Morrigan in one aspect is a triple goddess in her in her own right um and the aspects of her are the three sisters bibe or baby i'm not quite sure on the pronunciation of that maka and onan so they together are the morrigan and they are her three aspects um yeah this is this is this is really really technical i'm not sure I'm of my tiny little brain is going to be able to handle this adequately so you'll have to bear with me so they baby bibe anon and maka they were 
daughters of Ernmas. Um, and she had other daughters and sons, often described as triple aspects, goddess, gods and goddesses. So well, I'm not even going to go down that road. I'm, I'm struggling just to keep my brain on this bit. Anyway, Bybe, Bybe was the, or is, the prophetess. And she also, her associations are the crow, the wolf, uh, death, omens, and rebirth. Maka her associations are war, ravens, horses, and sovereignty, as in kingship or queenship. Um, Onan, she also has aspects re revolving around death, where she eases the passing of um, the fallen in battle, those who are dying on the battlefield, the cycles of life and death, birth and rebirth, uh, endings and beginnings. So there's lots of huge things going on here. And together, they are the Morrigan as a single entity, encompassing the whole range of those of those things. So, as I'm going to go down the road of talk, telling the story of um, Kukulan and the Battle Raid of Cooley and the Morrigan's Uh, involvement in in this. Um, you need a, a tiny bit of backstory. Like I say, it's epic. Now, in one aspect, one of the Morrigan aspects, uh, Maka, you have to go back a little ways. She was married and to cut a long story short on this bit, because I didn't quite get all this in my brain. Then she cursed the men of Ulster that if ever the, the the land or the king was in grave danger, then all the fighting men of Ulster would, for five days and four nights, experience um, the pains of childbirth. Um, that was because of her husband, he had a bet with, King of Ulster, and yeah, it was a whole big story of male foolishness and um, of boasting, shall we say? Yes, but that's a that's a whole other story, which I'm not going to go into because I'm just going to start getting confused. Anyway, so. Let's jump forward from there. Now, Queen Maeve and her husband were having an argument about who was richest in the beginning before they were married. I'm not going to try and pronounce Queen Maeve's husband's name. Don't make me try, please. So... They were gathering together all their wealth and making comparisons because he said he was richer bef even before they were married and so on and so on. Yeah, there was just 
they were both really proud people so the only thing that would tip would have tipped the balance in her husband's name in her husband's favor shall we say was the this great white bull that he owned and the only animal that um, would have beaten it was this a great brown bull from somewhere else don't make i please you'll have to forgive me on this pronunciations in irish are very difficult for me and i'm going to embarrass myself so i didn't even write them down because too many letters and my brain's a bit rubbish sometimes so she queen mave had wanted to make a deal with the owner of the bull to borrow it for a year where she offered him land and um wealth and in fact her very influential friendship that um, if he would lend her the bull she would win the contest with her husband and everything would be fine but once the deal had been struck by her men uh, there was a great feast and drinking and one of her men had came up with the the idea to say that if the guy hadn't have lent her the ball she was going to take it anyway and the the owner was you know really not happy about this and in fact a war was apparent war was going on it was he, he he refused and sent all the men home uh green mave she was furious she was furious with the men for messing the whole deal up she was furious that she wasn't getting the ball anyway so she declared war on ulster she wanted the ball that's a whole other story so war was upon them and her men they marched towards ulster and because of the curse from maca a goddess in her own right as well as part of the triple goddess of the morrigan um they were laid out in agony with childbirthing pains for five days and four nights well there is um ulster had a hero whom i'm not entirely clear on how he avoided the curse but he was a great warrior called Cucullin. Now, Cucullin, he was a proud, proud man, a great warrior, and felt nobody could beat him. In fact, nobody could really beat him. He, he was the he was a, the greatest warrior. Well, he was the only one left. He he was the only one able to fight. And the Morrigan appeared to him before he went into battle. And told him of her love for him and that she wanted to aid aid him in his battle against one man against an entire army so now as i say cullen he was a proud proud man and he refused the morrigan's advances so he he said no I don't need your help. I don't need anybody's help. I'm Cucullin. I'm the greatest warrior. I, 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 
yes, Rob, it is. Anyway, so, um, ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba, what was I? So, no, I don't need anybody's help. I'm Kukulin, I'm the greatest warrior. I need help from nobody. I can beat this army on my own. So, yeah, cool in the gang. That's funny. <laughs> but Cool didn't have a gang. He didn't need one. He was Kukulin. So, anyway, um, where was I? See, brain fried. Boom. So he sent her away. Now that was a mistake because she she may not have introduced herself as the Morrigan, but that's beside the point. She was insulted. She was insulted and you really don't want to do that to a goddess of any kind. This is a bad move. Well, now, there you go. Bad idea. Don't insult the Morrigan. Exactly, Rob. I think. Anyway, so, where am I? See, they, they do get a bit complicated when you're trying to remember them and you're not very familiar. So, so back to the story. So Kukulin sends the Morrigan away and she's highly insulted. Now, in order to... Anyway, so Kukulin's there. He's prepared for battle. And there's this one man against Queen Maeve's entire army. And Kukulin agrees to fight, but he agrees to fight in single combat one at a time, which is only fair. And Queen Maeve agrees to this. So they prepare each, each Kukulin prepares himself and Queen Maeve's first champion prepares himself for single combat. And as he approaches, as Kukulin approaches the battlefield, the Morrigan intervenes and she takes the form of an eel and trips him as he's walking to the battlefield. Now, Kukulin, as he trips, he lashes out and strikes, tr strikes the eel. He strikes the eel. I was just looking at Rob's uh, comments. And anyway, I'm just going to just carry on. So she strike, he strikes out at the eel, breaking ribs, breaking bones. Um, and the eel slithers off in 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 pain and Kukulin fights the first champion and wins. The following day, the second champion is prepared and Kukulin prepares to fight. And as he walks to the field of battle, the, the Morrigan in this time as in the form of a wolf appears before him. And Cullen takes his um, takes his sling, his slingshot, and th 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 throws throws. Is that the right word? I don't know. Sling flings a stone at the wolf, striking it in the eye, blinding it in one eye, and the wolf departs, runs off, and the Morrigan defeated for a second time battle ensues and queen maeve's second champion is defeated the third day 
and the third champion is prepared for battle. And on the way to the field, Cullen is faced this time with a large cow of which it's the Morrigan. We know this. I think there's a pattern forming. Cullen takes his sling again and fires another stone at the beast, this time breaking its leg. And the Morrigan is defeated for a third time. Uh, but Cullen faces the champion once again in battle and is triumphant. So, Cullen requests a day of respite. He's fought three and won three times. He needs a bit of a break can understand that. Queen Maeve agrees. So Cullen walks back to his camp and on the way he comes across an old woman milking a cow and the old woman she offers Cucullin a sip of milk. In fact, she offers him three sips of milk because he's tired, he's been in battle, and he's very grateful. So on each sip of milk, he offers her a blessing. And with each blessing, um, he heals one of the Morrigan's wounds uh, and so she is restored and reveals herself to him and it gets a bit hazy on that point but she then offers a prediction of Cucullin's death So Cucullin rests. He's obviously got th these thoughts running through his mind. The Morrigan is pretty upset with him for, you know, being, a, you know, rejecting her advances. But he doesn't really think of it. He's Cucullin. He's the greatest warrior there's ever been so he's not really worried but on the next um the next time arranged for the battle of single combat with Maeve's fourth champion um he who have we got he, as he's walking to the field battle, he crosses the ford at the river and he meets another old woman there washing the armour, washing the blood bloodstained armour armor of a fallen, um, fallen soldier. And that's, uh, that, that's one of the, um, Oh, what's the word for it? It's an omen, often often spoke of an omen. The the old woman washing the 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 blood stained armor of the soldier is a is an omen of impending doom, of impending death. So, Cucullin is now a little bit more concerned, and. But he meets the champion in battle, and a great battle it is. But Cucullin is ultimately beaten. But to, what's the word? 
he ties himself to a, he knows he's beaten but to die he he chooses to die on his feet as the greatest warrior and he ties himself to a stand a standing stone that so that any anybody seeing him will know that he is Kukul and he has died on his feet and he is the greatest warrior in a way to try and instill more fear into any, to, to further battles. Um, in fact, the battle that was later to come with, as on the final day, the, the men of Ulster are um, revived from their birthing pains or relieved of their birthing pains and the war in in full can begin. Pat McDonald in Michigan. Where in Michigan are you from? Tell me more. Anyway, so uh, where was I? So the main battle begins. Cucullan still tied to the stone, and his um, the 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 fact of his death is. Revealed as when a uh, when a crow lands on his shoulder and he's he's died he's gone. Anyway, so that's like I say the, these the this story isn't f fully fixed in my head and I may have pronounced a lot of it wrong, but you get the idea now. That's the story that most people are aware of. But the Morrigan and the stories and the stories of her sisters. Uh, the, oh, I've got a picture. Hang on. I found this on the Tinter web. You know, there's lots of other rummage around the internet and there's a whole load of images revolving around the um the morrigan not all of them you could say are particularly accurate nobody really knows but you know quite like that one but then also i found this one by somebody uh Cullen tied to the stone but anyway but the morrigan she's uh she's more i feel after reading what i've and looking into only unrelatively re relatively briefly it must be said only if the 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 stories, there's far more stories and far more aspects to her than just being a goddess of death or war. That doesn't really um, respect the the whole, the entirety of her nature because she is she's a shapeshifter. She is. You can't, oh, she is who she needs to be at that time. Does that make sense? It makes sense to me. You can't, you can't put a shapeshifter in a box and say, this is what she is. This is who she is. She has many aspects. Um, she has many aspects when when she is the Morrigan. She has many aspects when she is one of the three sisters. It's 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 a huge concept. I mean, we've got the the triple goddess, the you, the maiden mother crone aspect of the triple goddess, which is um, quite well known. I feel. Um, As it turns out, there are more triple aspect goddesses than you would 
you may imagine, the Morrigan being one of them. Um, but having said that, she she is f fairly well attached to war and battle. Um, another another story which was um, the Dagda asked for assistance with the uh, a great battle against the invading Fomorians and she agreed to this one um, and then where uh, now what was it what was it I read Well, there's, there's, depends on the on who's telling the story. In some stories, she inspires the the warriors and the magicians of Ireland to to drive the Fomorians away. Um, in another story, um, she her her chants and and songs. Are, are so terrifying that the Fomorians actually turn around and run away. It, it, you know, so there's there's lots and lots of stories, but yes, um, the oh, there's there's so much. It's hard to keep it all in my head. It was hard enough just to try and keep that bit in there, really, in some respects, even with my giant blue stone. But I think it's one of those occasions where if you want to know about the Morrigan and the individual aspects of her, as well as the combined aspects you're going to be a long long time discovering them because like I said she's a shapeshifter so she will reveal to you what she wants to reveal at that time perhaps what she wants you to know or perhaps what you need to know who knows but just describing her as a war slash death goddess is not doing her justice, because in in like I was saying before, the um, as a as as an un onan, she was concerned with the cycles of all things life death birth rebirth endings beginning the cycles of life as maka um she was related to war but also to sovereignty so the the land and the kingship and the protection of the people, um, which is a completely different thing than as Bibe, the, 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 the aspect of prophecy and the seer the seeing of of what may come actually i did read i didn't wasn't able to commit it to memory but there was um an article on the second prophecy of the morrigan which i'd really recommend you have a read at it's quite fascinating. Now, bear in mind, this is old, old prophecy and 
considering what's going on now, it's quite terrifying, really. But yeah, go and have a look at that. The second prophecy of the Morrigan. Let's write. Uh, can I write that on there? Uh, where's the T? The I can only type. I can't talk and type at the same time. What have I done there? Oh, that's what I did. Uh. Yeah, yeah, there it is. Yeah. Go and have a look at that. There are some 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 are some translations are a little bit more accessible than others, but yeah, it's well worth a read. Um, there is a book. Um, dedicated to the Morrigan. Um, I've seen it on the Amazon. Uh, oh, oh, there we go. I've seen it on the Amazon. It might be available in the US. It might not. I don't know. Um, I'll have to see if I can post it on the page, a link or linky thing or something, which might, I mean, I, I only discovered this last night, so I haven't read it, obviously. So, um, well, yeah, there's... Yeah, this was a, a bit of a challenge, which was a little bit overwhelming. Let's talk about the Morrigan, because it's just such a huge story. In fact, it's more than a story. It's more than an epic. It is her as, um, references to her crop up a lot, and there's been a lot of other recent more of more recent years other ideas um have come in uh for example i mean she was an irish goddess or is let's look sorry she is an irish goddess um obviously with the celtic movement from ireland to wales wales to ireland she also inhabits Wales as well um, and that brings into question it, the, not, not brings into question but brings in the idea of the Morrigan in Arthurian legend let's for example the Morrigan as a name, as a title. And then we have Morgan Le Fay uh, in, in, the, in, in the story of Arthur, very similar name. Hmm. Just a thought, not saying it is, but it's something that can be considered if you wished it or wish to consider it. So yeah, there's, there's, it, it was a bit of a, a task which I can't say that I've succeeded at but equally I haven't failed at talking about the Morrigan because she's just we might have to return to this at another time also with when I've got all the tales a little bit straighter in my head shall we say so what else but yeah basically there's the Morrigan. So what's going on in the room of chatting? So, oh, what am I doing? There we go. So what else is, who have we got? 
and I try and I'm I'm not I wasn't really I was kind of ignoring the the chat room because it distracts me from trying to tell the story and keep that straight in my head. But equally, I wasn't ignoring you all. So, uh, yeah, the 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 Irish sagas are. I'm going to show that one. Where is it? The Irish sagas are immense and all interlinked and connected. So. <sighs> They, 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 they need a better storyteller than I to actually do them justice, shall we say. What time is it? 22. I've got 20 minutes. What should we talk about now? Uh, -da -ba -boo. So, is anybody still there? Comment, comment, comment. Anybody? Have to say happy birthday to your mum. No, she. A bit late, but happy birthday to your mum. Um, I did notice that the other day. Or was it last night? Okay, fine. Rob left. Bye, Rob. Um, but yeah, what else? What else should I ramble on about for a bit? Title of your show now, then, now and then. Dream for about this betwixt in between. Oh, yes, liminal spaces. Ooh, that's an interesting one. It was basically the title between now and then was between when I was preparing the show and when I was doing the show, because I don't know, I had no idea, no real clue of what or where I was going with it. <sighs> God say it. There's no unusual there. Um, so between now and then was hoping that I would come up with some kind of idea of what I was going to yammer on about. Uh, but Stephanie beat me to that, so she gave me the idea. But in-betweens, yes, liminal places. Um, yeah, they're special. They're, they're places between here and the other world in some regards. Or here in the land of the grey folk, the, f the fair folk. Um, uh, oh, hang on. Let me just read that again. So, yes, in between. It's a nexus point in some ways. The it's like the shoreline between the land and the sea. They they're often places of or can be places of great change. Um often places where our ancestors would leave offerings either to their ancestors or to the gods or to the grey folk um, the points for me where you have a choice to make to carry on to turn around and run away to push forward even though you're scared um, 
like the 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 story of Pradari in the in the first branch of no not Pradari, Pwith. Um, Pradari's Pwith son. So ignore that bit. Um, the story Pwith when he um, he was tricked by around. I say tricked. He was. Let's let's be honest. He was tricked by around um, King of Anu and. Anun, um, and he tricked him into taking his place and for a battle with uh, what was his name? Afghan. Um, I had a question if you would weigh in. Druids often refer to Mother Earth while native teachings refer to her grandmother, which is proper in your opinion. They're both proper. It's just it's a they're both they're both proper from the different perspectives. Um, whether it be a cultural reference or where it, it's the, it, there's no there's no difference. It's just terminology. Um, and there is no proper. It's how you relate. Yeah. Um, so Native Americans are not wrong in referring her to her as Grandmother Earth, and we're not wrong in re in in relating to her as Mother Earth. It's how. It's our own relationship. Does that answer the question? So, oh yeah. Um, uh, so yeah, Pwith, uh, around trick Pwith into taking his place in with a battle for, with Afghan. And the, the, um, the, the, the entrance to his land was through Havka, uh, Pwith, uh, around was King of the Grey Folk, uh, or one of them. Not in a right wrong sense, but what is your preference and why? Huh. I have always used the mother aspect of the earth and the mother aspect of the goddess or worked with her most extensively and probably because I take care of my mother and it, it, it's, it feels more natural to me. Mm. There you go. Others, others I know work um, I'm just going to bring that up uh on a nature work, but have no rational defense for it. So I was given my land which I connected. Well, that's yeah. See, language is it can be language can be clumsy, regardless of which language you're using. Um. You use the word defense for it. Uh, we use the, the term, I have no rational defense for it, is what I was given. Why do you need a rational defense? Would be my question to you. If that's what you're given and that's what feels right, then that's it. Um, you don't need to defend it. 
it's just what you have it's your your connection it's it's it's, it's quite simple it's, it's simple you don't need to defend it you don't need to rationalize it there's no need for any of that it's either you work with that or you don't a lot of modern society i feel has to needs um what is the word i'm looking for a lot of rash modern society with its technology and its need for clarification and um putting things in boxes um tries to force us to put our ideas and thoughts and beliefs and everything into those boxes so that um yeah it wants to define us and in those definitions it wants to know what why wherefores and with spiritual paths of any description there comes a point i feel where the academic breaks down the academic work isn't enough you can read all the books you can read about all the faiths and all the spiritual um paths but until you let go of the intellectual to a certain extent whatever to this well or should we say to the extent that's comfortable for the person in, in um so I just seen Rob's next comment and I'm just going to put it up. Um, da, 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 where was, what was I saying? Let, let go of the academic and the intellectual and feel it. That's when things become clear and we might not be able to verbalize or or put those that put your feelings into a coherent form of conversation because they're so personal to you you feel it you feel it to the depths of your soul and that this is right this is what works for you this is your path or however you want to put it and words fail you because it's that's the connection at its most profound in my view yeah academics are not sufficient academics acad academics work on facts in in a lot of ways spirituality works on feeling on faith on interpretation on hope 
on letting go of many things and of holding on to others is is so neb the the argument becomes nebulous in some ways when you can't really hang up grab hold of it as soon as you try with spirituality as soon as you try and grab hold of it it changes and moves into something slightly different and you but when you feel it you know you just know it in your heart in your soul you just feel it and you know it's right for you i'm going to there we go spirit defies language descriptions many times there is a loss of which or what words describe the feeling has been a long long time two legs humans yeah i just don't try i can know i can just take i can explain <sighs> In Druidry, you can explain to a certain extent who you are and what you believe and why you connect in the way you do and what you connect with, whether it be trees, spirits, the gods and goddesses, etc., etc. You can write those down and say this is a brief overview of what Druidry is. But you can't write out a set of instructions on how to feel what druidry is because every single one every single druid that i know is feels it in their way in in the in and expresses it in their own way um there's no prescription of what you should do there's no prescription there is <sighs> Technically, if you're in a group ceremony, it's good to have an idea, a roadmap of where people, where you need to go with this ceremony, because everybody needs to work together and know what they're doing. But when you're a spirituality, is I th in some ways that it's most profound is when you're connecting with it on an individual level, on your level, on in your way and the revelations you get for yourself are where it really really gets gets to the heart of things and those those just you just can't there's no language that can describe it um hang on there's other things here uh Okay. Uh, coming to grips with the assertion that theology and spirituality are essentially psychology. I completely disagree with that one, Rob. Um, for myself. And yes, exactly. Uh, you can't describe it. Um, religion speaking allegory. Uh, maybe, but then you have to make a distinction between a religion and a spirituality. A spiritual path <laughs> it, in, on a religious path, I feel that the rules are laid down and this is what you must do and this is how you must be and this is what you are to believe. On a spiritual path, so I would, uh, what was I talking about? Uh, the religions and stuff so 
yeah, that's a whole other um, a whole other conversation. And one that never ends, by the way. You can't end that conversation. That conversation goes on and on and on and on. Um, being the Druid path, the Druid spirituality is what's right for me. Um, Nashi is Native American. Others, there are other spiritualities and other faiths. Um, as long as we can respect and learn from each other, then all is good. But when um, one faith, I don't know, it's not the faith, when the people within one faith decide that theirs is the only argument and the only right way, then things start going a bit wrong. We've seen that throughout history. Um, that one I would agree with, Rob, absolutely. Um, what's... Do, 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 ah. Okay. Uh, so I'll look down here. Where's it bigger? Religion is the mental aspect of spirituality, where spirituality is the heart and soul. Religion, trying to describe in words our emotions called spiritual. Yeah. Yeah, essentially. Um, but I'd still... I wouldn't separate religion and spirituality, but I still see them in as two connected but distinct ideas. The 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 religion is for me constructed from the I no yeah you see it's nebulous my brain's starting to hurt now um, yeah yeah I, I agree with Nashi but I still, but equally, I think there's more both in connection and separation between the two. Hmm. Let's bring that one up. Uh, Uh, and there's a couple of Druidism. Yeah, I mean, just keep going, Rob. Keep going, seeing where it leads you. If that's where you feel you are being drawn, then that's where you need to follow. If you, if you wish, because that's the other thing about I feel sort of between spiritual and religious are uh, uh, spiritual offers you the path and it f feels now maybe this is simply because of the people within specific um, religions um, they spirituality offers you the path and the choice to follow it or not, as feels right to you. And religion is saying you've got to go down here, otherwise, you know, bad, horrible things happen and you're going to do it this way. So, um, but that might, like I say, that might just be the people within it because they can be problematic. 
as we know. But anyway, um, now, so where are we? Okay, we're running late. So it's, I've overrun. I'm not entirely sure how, but I have. So I'll try and remember to post stuff. Um, and I should say to Rafa now, but I'll be back with next month with something or another. I'll come up. I'll come up with an idea. So, unless anybody's got anything that they want me to yammer on about, then, well, thank you, Nashi. That's very kind of you to say. Very kind. Um, where was I? So, if anybody has anything they want to yammer on about then uh drop me a message of some description and we'll have a look but until then i should say to her for now so peace and blessings to everybody until next month when i'll be back so have a great and glorious day i hope it's not too stormy and rainy where you are like it here is is here so have a great and glorious day and i'll see you again soon bye everybody